Bella Vista Community Television presents Bella Vista and Beyond. Today our hosts are Tricia Ayers and Bambi Crozier. And we will be hearing about hearing and the county extension programs and automobile maintenance and care. And now to the studio for our program. Hello, thanks so much for joining us today. It's been a very long time since we've been in the studio and uh, I'm feeling a little discombobulated to be honest, but welcome to uh, Bella Vista and beyond. I'm Bambi, one of your hosts and Miss Trisha is with us today. Hi Bambi, how are you? I'm, I'm loving the new set. I am. It's feeling very comfortable. I like this and it's so good to be back together again it doing is. these programs. It is. I feel like 2021 is gonna be a great year for everybody. I hope so as well. And so, so as well. um, why don't we get on with the show? Mm -hmm. yes. Sounds good. Yes, absolutely. So uh, moving on with the show, we, with our great comfortable chairs here, I would like to introduce my first guest, um, a staple in the Bella Vista community. And I know we were talking about this before we started filming about the wonderful health fairs that we have in Bella Vista, and they are always part of this. Um, Dr. Molly Dillon is audiologist and owner of Blue Wave Hearing, and I'd like to welcome her to the show. Welcome, Molly. Thank you so much for having me. Thank um, you. This is actually my third visit to the studio. I have been in uh, Bella Vista as your local neighborhood audiologist since 2005. Um, so back in the days of Vicki and Pete. So it's an honor to be back again. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I was so excited that you could be here today. I know that I always learn so much about hearing that I didn't know. And uh, I'm gonna jump in with my first question and then you can educate me and the rest of our viewers. Why is it important to have hearing tests? Yeah, absolutely. So AARP generally recommends to get a baseline test um, over the age of 50. Things do change over time as we age gracefully and having a, a baseline kind of gives you a tipping point. So if things do start to get bad, we can catch things uh, before they progress. So 50 is kind of the benchmark. I was reading, I think that I was reading that this morning. And then another question is, what are some of the signs that maybe your hearing is not where it used to be? Okay. Are there any indications that you, you know, not, I don't know, not hearing the telephone. I, I have trouble with that. Tr keep trying to turn up the volume. Yeah, um, so great question. And I would say that a lot of times um, the person you're living with, um, whether it's your spouse or maybe one of your adult children, they're gonna notice the TV's up way louder than is normal. Um, you have difficulty uh, sometimes hearing over the phone. Uh, definitely having to ask others to repeat on a frequent basis. These are kind of the telltale signs that you may not be hearing as well as you used to. So, okay. great question. Um, and also, I know we talked about this last time you were on the show, but it's always so interesting to me, um, hearing loss and the connection with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, yeah. So specifically dementia, and I'm so glad you asked that. It's something we really spend a lot of time counseling our patients on. There's actually a study from Johns Hopkins, which has now been going on for over 20 years. So there's some pretty definitive evidence that if you do have hearing loss and you don't treat it um, to somehow prop up that system um, to allow the brain to hear natural sounds, you are going to be at a greater predisposition to have cognitive issues such as dementia later in life. So it's really um, important that we educate our community, that it's not just about socializing um, and your hearing for kind of a convenience sake. It's also about the way the brain develops over time and making sure we keep all of those connections uh, popping, so to speak. Yeah. Having teenagers myself, do you see many teens that come in for hearing tests in your practice? Um, the national statistics are unfortunately astounding. We are now finding that about 15% of all teenagers do have a mild hearing loss, and a lot of it can be attributed to earbuds or ear pods. And again, the music levels um, sometimes are, are somewhat moderate. I know there are uh, warnings now on the devices, but if you're listening to those sounds for, you know, 10 hours a day, uh, over time, absolutely that can make a big difference. And certainly last year, many people working from home, having teleconferences, they're continuously getting bombarded with sounds. And again, over time, um, that can lead to some structural damage in the inner ear. So fantastic question. I was very, I was, when I was reading about um, your profession, um, yes. one thing was a checklist for parents who were sending their kids to college to get them a hearing test. Absolutely. 
Yeah. So if you're going to pay, you know, $25,000 a year <laughs> to get your kids educated, you want to make sure they're actually receiving the message. And so certainly if they know they may have a mild loss, um, even though it doesn't affect them socially, they may want preferential seating in the classroom or they may need other types of visual tools uh, to augment their learning. So again, with the amount of money that we pay for secondary education, absolutely critical um, that that person is able to cope uh, with any of the issues that may be caused with the lack of hearing. Great question okay, again. Okay. Um, 2020 was an interesting year for, I think, for everybody, uh, whether you were in business, going to school, everything changed. Um, how did it disrupt your business and what procedures have you put into place? Yeah, so uh, I feel like we've all aged um, a lot more than just one year in the past year. Um, so yeah, our clinic was actually shut down for about two months while we were kind of waiting for the go-ahead from uh, the governor and uh, local policymakers. So we still have people in the community that do depend on our services um, to make sure, especially if you're at home all the time and you're more dependent upon those interactions um, with your loved ones. So we did begin implementing curbside and that has worked beautifully and then since then we've been able to transition into very strict procedures to make sure we don't have any cross-contamination that we don't have more than two people in our waiting room at the same time and again we are actually continuing curbside checks um, and it has been said by many people in many industries that 2020 will forever change the way that we do business and I will admit that some of the telehealth uh, technologies that have come out as well as the curbside visits will probably continue to play a role in our business model for many years to come. So I think uh, with most businesses and certainly for everyone dealing with these issues, uh, adapt. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's constantly changing. Do you use telehealth? <clears throat> how do you, how would you use telehealth as an audiologist? Yeah, so it's based on cloud-based computing which has been around for a while. And so there is a, a packet of information digitally with ones and zeros that we would send up to the cloud. And then if the patient had a smartphone, we could actually download those electroacoustic changes um, onto their smartphone and then they would then download those into their hearing devices. Wow. So yeah, like I said, it's a phenomenal technology. It's been on the cusp for a while, but again, 2020, um, for all the bad things that happened, have certainly pushed a lot of technologies forward that would not have otherwise been utilized in such a capacity. Right. So. And I know um, in the jobs that I do and the seniors that I come into contact with during 2020, I would say that everybody became very tech savvy. Yeah. Um, I know for the attorney that I worked for, we were doing virtual signings, and hopefully we weren't seeing the carpet all the time, but people, yeah. people really <laughs> took up the call and, and got in there, which was impressive, I think. Yeah. It, it was. So another thing, I went to the website. You have a, a program where people can test drive their hearing aid. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Thank you for asking. Um, it is one of the things that probably sets us apart from our competitors in Northwest Arkansas. With hearing, it's a lot different to correct than vision. Um, with vision, the attempt is always to try to get you back to 2020. And certainly with some of the surgeries, it could even be 2015. The hearing system is a very different system. It's an analog system by nature. So sometimes trying to replace it with digitally synthesized technology being pushed through a damaged or distorted hearing system, really the brain is the place where everything is kind of calculated and uh, determined. So there's a lot of parts that are involved, um, how old the person is, um, how many years they've had hearing loss and have gone without treatment. So for each individual person, we all are as unique as our fingerprints, and that includes a plan to rehabilitate a hearing system that has been offline sometimes for many, many years. So uh, according to the literature and research, yeah. it does take about 20 to 30 days for that hearing system to really fully come back online to where it can detect sounds, but also appropriately categorize those and prioritize them. So um, part of the test drive is to allow for that system in the brain uh, to fully complete so that patients can fully realize the benefits of hearing again. Um, and because we know the literature, allowing for this customization has really given people a lot uh, better chance to discover what they've been missing 
uh, without having any uh, basically monetary funds on the line. So That's it's wonderful. a great way to jump into the pool with uh, no downside. Yes, and I would encourage people to go to the website because you have lots of great resources. Absolutely. And it's very it's a, it's a nice, easy way to navigate to the website. Sometimes there's a lot of buttons to click, and no, yeah. it was really the, very informative and, and lots of information. So uh, the website address is, mm -hmm. if anybody wants. It is uh, www.bluewavehearing.com. Um, fairly simple. There's a, a few tabs, but the test drive logo comes up immediately. And then as you scroll down, again, it describes in detail more of what I've uh, discussed as far as tying different brands, different technology levels, and determining what fits you. Uh, and by the end of that 30 days, you typically are much more astute uh, to the world of hearing, hearing care technologies, and what may or may not work for you or your loved ones. So it's a great program, and I uh, encourage anybody to uh, give us a call and check it out. It is absolutely free of charge. And telephone number for making appointments, drive-bys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be 876-0110. And again, that is 876-0110. And uh, again, we would love to get you on the schedule, learn more about you, and determine what might be the best uh, outcomes for you when it comes to hearing for you or someone that you love. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Molly, D Molly Dillon, always. And I, I encourage people, we do our physicals every year. We do our dental appointments. Please do hearing appointments very important so important absolutely thank you and it's a pleasure always thank you for having hopefully me hopefully we can get back to those health fairs in bella vista I at reardon so. hall this year and because you always do free hearing screenings for everybody and that's a wonderful wonderful resource for the community absolutely. thank you so much okay, thank you for having thank me you. and good luck appreciate it well thank you so much to, to molly and she is going to pop off now and uh, go back to her place of business. We do appreciate all of our professionals taking time out of work. And I, in just a few seconds, am going to turn it over to my next guest and turn it over to my co-host, too. So uh, my next guest is Trudy McManus, and I'm going to turn it over to my host. Trudy, please introduce yourself. All right, I would be happy to. Thank you so much for having me. So my name is Trudy McManus, and I am the County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Science in Benton County with the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture Research and Extension, and I'm so glad to be here with you to tell you about some of our programs we have going on. I'm excited to see you. Uh, this is the first time I've had a chance to meet you, uh, and, but I'm excited that um, I can do this, and I know that you've got a lot to share with us, and I have a few questions that I want to ask as well, but is there somewhere specific yes. you want to start with? I know she's got listed on here that she, you've got to walk across Arkansas. I do. Tell me um, about that. Well, I have a whole lot of programs actually to talk okay. about. So I have sort of, um, we have kind of going on in Northwest Arkansas between Benton and Washington counties, a whole health and wellness program that we're trying to push out. Um, we normally do programs, but this year because of COVID, we're having to do things more virtually. So mm -hmm. uh, we've tried to have a platform for that and really put that out. So we have a website to share with you and a Facebook page uh, that we're running most of these programs through. Mm -hmm. So uh, walk across Arkansas is just one of those and it isn't until March okay. um, but basically what it is it's going to start on March 15th um, and run for just a couple of months and what you do is you get to find a, a, your own group mm -hmm. of people um, that you're participating with. So you have kind of a team, you name your team, you get to report your personal physical activity um, or your team captain um, might report for you, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't have computer access or whatever. And it's just any kind of physical activity and you keep the minutes. So even if you're anything to get your heart rate up, even if you're vacuuming pretty vigorously or mm -hmm. you're out really pulling weeds or something and really getting your heart rate up or maybe you're purposefully out walking or um, maybe you go to the gym or with an exercise group you can count any of those minutes and so then it the computer program tallies all of your minutes together for your team and then you get to find out how your team does in Benton County in Northwest Arkansas and in the state of Arkansas. So it's a really neat program. I love the team aspect, that supportive group environment, that even if you're not doing your physical activity together, you can call each other and encourage each other, and I think that's great. So it's one of my favorite programs that we're doing right now. I think it um, adds some accountability. I know for me, 
if I'm going to go exercise or I say I'm going to go exercise, let's just say I'm say I'm going to go do something, uh, the likelihood of me actually doing that is very low unless I know someone's counting on me. And I know that sounds terrible and I'm just telling you the truth about being transparent about who I am. I need that accountability and I think that program sounds like even though I can't necessarily be with my friends at that particular time, I can still get my hike in. I can still go walk around my neighborhood. I can still do what it is I need to do and have a cheerleader telling me, good job, you did that, and me doing the same for them. Well, and you're absolutely right, which um, I'll tell you about another awesome program we have going on just for folks like you, which is most everybody, Mm -hmm. um, it seems like, because I'm like that too. But um, I do want to tell you a couple more things about the the Walk Across Arkansas program. So when you sign up for that, you also get a newsletter that comes out from the state for participants Mm -hmm. in the Walk Across Arkansas program. Plus, we are trying to do kind of a different aspect to it. So through our NWA Living Well Facebook page, um, Anna and I, she's the agent in Washington County, we are trying to put out encouraging posts during Walk Across Arkansas. So almost daily through the week, you'll get encouraging posts that have healthy recipes and fitness tips and just different things like that. So um, I think it's a great you know, tool to help boost our motivation mm-hmm. for getting out there and walking and getting our physical activity in um, in the springtime when that comes around. Um, also, we're going to have a speaker series We tried that last fall and it went over really well. So we'll have some more speakers just speaking about health and nutrition topics. um, Are those done on like a Zoom or do you pull people together? Tell me more about that. We do. We'll probably be offering that by Zoom again. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe someday we can have, you know, in-person programs again. But Mm -hmm. right now, most everything is virtual. So Mm -hmm. they can, you know, tune into those from their the comfort of their own homes. Um, okay. and do it that way. So speaking of doing things by Zoom and needing a group to stay accountable to, um, we just started a new program and you can still join. It's called Extension Get Fit. And this is the first time I've done it virtually, but in the past I have taught Extension Get Fit classes for over 10 years. And my, in my opinion, it's one of the greatest parts about you know what I get to do. So I really love this program and what it does for people. And so basically what it is, Extension Get Fit is a strength training program, and it's based in and around the chair. It's safe, and it's research-based, so Mm -hmm. we know that it's effective. And I have seen a lot of the the great effects that it's had on on people, and they share their testimonies with me about what a great program it is. Um, And so we are actually doing that every Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 to 9.30, um, and you know, that's the recommendations to do it twice a week, but mm-hmm. you could do it another day on your own if you wanted to as well. Um, there is a slight cost with that particular program. It is $20 for the 12 weeks that we're doing the program initially. Now, it's a neat program because we train our leaders and volunteers. So if we have someone who is interested in, you know, being trained and continuing with that program, um, the $20 you know, goes on for a year. So you're good for a year until wow. the next year mm-hmm. um, if, if they decide to continue the program. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and the monthly nutrition topics, do you do that as well? We do, yes. So we have like a monthly nutrition spotlight. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a new thing that we're starting this year. And so every, every month, it's just once a month, it's going to be the second Tuesday at 3 o'clock, and it's virtual as well. So you can just zoom in with us, and mm-hmm. we just hit a different nu- up-to-date nutrition topic each month. And in February, we're doing the Mind Diet, which I really like. It's a very exciting one, um, I think. So I hope everyone will tune in with us for that as well. And we have two other programs mm-hmm. I wanted to, to mention. Um, We're also doing through our NWA Living Well Facebook page, we're doing a program called Getting Your Hearts Right, um, which is really focusing on three keys to better relationships. And so as I was going through some of our curricula that I was wanting to, to, to just get out there, I thought, man, that seems like it just really applies right now. Um, So I have enjoyed posting it. The posts have helped me, and I hope it's reaching folks out there. But it's really easy because I just have it on the page. So all you have to do is go to our NWA Living Well page, 
and just follow it and then like a few of the posts so that you're sure to receive it on your Facebook feed and then you'll just get it on your Facebook feed every day. That sounds so. awesome. Well, I know we need to go to a quick break. Uh, so we're going to do that. But when we come back, I still want to talk with you and get some more information about that and also make sure that our viewers understand where they can go to get this information. So we want to make sure we get that on the screen for you. Okay. Yeah, that'll be so great. So we'll be right back with you. Thanks viewers. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Mike Cleary, host of Bella Vista and Beyond, and Happy New You. Like many Northwest Arkansas businesses and organizations, Bella Vista Community Television experienced a voluntary shutdown in the latter part of 2020, affecting our regular programming schedule. As a result, you may have noticed Many of our programs had been rerun over the last few months of the year. We here at Bella Vista Community Television take COVID-19 health guidelines very seriously. We chose to close the station for several weeks rather than place our staff and guests at risk of exposure. In 2021, we are resuming our normal programming schedule with new sets, new hosts, and new shows while continuing to practice social distancing, wearing face masks, and routine sterilization of our set and studio equipment. All of us here at Bella Vista Community Television appreciate your viewership of our original programs highlighting businesses and organizations in the Northwest Arkansas area. Our shows listing can be found in local newspapers and on our website, bellavistatv.org and bellavistatv.com. You can also view our programs on YouTube anytime you want. Along with those of you viewing our original programs, we would also like to thank and acknowledge our loyal members who subscribe to BBC TV and who offer financial support to the station through their generous contributions. You too can support the station by visiting our website, bellavistatv.com, and click on the Donate button. Or you can set up a monthly contribution through PayPal. We will continue to offer interesting and entertaining shows to Bella Vista visitors and residents, and we look forward to providing the same quality programming as you've come to expect from us in the past. Thank you for choosing Bella Vista Community Television. Welcome back. Here is our host, Bambi. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for coming back. Uh, we're going to continue here with Miss Trudy from the um, Extension, County Extension, and she's got a couple more programs that she wants to share with you. Then we're going to get you connected so you know how to reach her and sign up for these programs. Miss Trudy. All right. Thank you so much. So another one of our wellness programs that we have going on is called Renew You Health for Everyone. And we've actually already started with that too, but you can join in anytime. And um, we have several different topics that we're focusing on. I just wanted to list a few of them. We've talked about self-care and understanding hunger, making peace with your food, emotional eating, gentle nutrition, motivators to move, fitness for everybody. I think they're great topics. And so far we've really enjoyed um, sharing with a lot of the individuals who've joined us. So we're doing that two ways. We have a private Facebook group that we're doing that through NWA Renew You. And also we're posting all of our information on there. You can find our past programs and everything that we've done. But we're also meeting um, live via Zoom and Facebook Live on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. So they had one this morning and it was great. So um, 
I, I hope that folks can join us for that too. You can find out more information on the uh, NWA. You can find the group NWA Renew You or the NWA Living Well as as well. So, fantastic. Yeah. And you said you had one more that you were. I to do. share with us? I do, yeah. Um, but also let me share my webpage. Okay. So we have a webpage where you can find all that. If you're not on Facebook or um, you just have difficulty finding that, we have a constant site that we use, which is uaex.edu slash nwa wellness. Perfect. Yes. So you can always get a hold of me if you aren't sure where to find that as well. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about an uh, organization that we partner with, which is the Arkansas Extension Homemakers. Um, as a state, we've partnered with them for over a hundred years. So it used to be called Home Demonstration. And so they are still going strong, especially in Benton and Washington counties. Here in Benton County, we have 11 clubs still working. And um, they're, they're a great organization. Their cornerstones are leadership, education, and community development. So um, they're always helping the community and out there with education. So they have a, a new program that they're going to be doing, and it is creative arts workshops. And they're all going to be on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they can join virtually from, again, from the comfort of their own home. And it's at 10 o'clock on the fourth Thursday. So once a month we're going to be doing these. We're going to have topics such as um, ice tie-dyeing, floral arranging, basket weaving, and those are just a few of the fun topics that mm -hmm. we're going to be doing. We're going to have some different neat speakers. So hopefully, you know, folks that are interested in creative arts can join us for those programs too. That sounds exciting. So are they going to have an opportunity like to get a list of what they're going to need for the class? Are they watching and learning? How does that work? Is it interactive? That's a great question. So we've decided since this is going to be for anybody and everybody that we're just going to do it demonstration style. And then if you're interested in getting um, more interest, you know, more into it, beyond that, then you can get a hold of the speaker, or you can always, you know, contact me about um, any interest you have with the Extension Homemakers, because they're always doing great programs like that. So. Yeah, I think that's amazing. That sounds like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So I know we've covered a lot of data. There's a lot of programs, and there's a lot of opportunities to, uh, to do things, and from the comfort of your own home. Uh -huh. And we've given them Facebook pages and groups and websites. What is the best way for someone who has a question on anything that you have talked about today, for them to reach you and say, is it a phone number? Is it an email? Is it, what is the best way to reach you about any of these programs? Well, about any of these, I would say I'm the central person. So okay. you can always find me at the extension office. Uh -huh. My email address is tmcmanus at uaex.edu, or you can always call the extension office at 479-271-1060. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really Thank appreciated you. learning about all these things. Absolutely. Um, and we're going to go ahead and let her head on, and then we're going to bring our next guest on. Uh, while I'm waiting for him to come up, I wanted to talk with you guys for a little bit about hope. And I want to share a couple of definitions I've, I've written down on this card because I don't want to get this wrong. So hope is a feeling of expectation and a desire for something. Hope is also a feeling of trust. And in this last year, which has been so trying, so uh, we've all experienced um, a plague like none of us who's alive has ever been through. And it's it's been challenging, it's been um, overwhelming, it's been isolating. We've also had a very um, crazy political uh, season and, and an election that has been what feels like more dividing than unifying. And because of this, this has resulted in a lot of isolation, not only physically from our friends and our family, because we couldn't get within six feet or we had to stay away from people, but also emotionally, uh, isolating because we might not feel the same as some of our friends and family or we feel all of this um, we're seeing all these things in the news or on social media and we can feel uh, very alone and I wanted to talk about that feeling of lost um, 
anxious, that feeling of overwhelm, that, that just that hurt. And so next month, I've got Miss Katie Wells, who is a cognitive behavioral therapist, who's going to join us. And I, she focuses on depression, anxiety, relationship issues. Um, there was a list 10 miles long on her website that you guys are going to get um, access to next month. But please tune in next month. I have asked her specifically to give us some tips that we can use immediately to help us when we're feeling anxious, depressed, um, overwhelmed, uh, any number of things that you might feel uh, while you're feeling isolated. So I've asked her to bring those next month. And if you want tips and you don't want to wait till next month, we're going to post those on our Facebook page, our Facebook page today, uh, as well as get it up on our blog probably sometime in the next week. And our, um, our website is bellavistatv.com. And then you can find us on Facebook at Bella Vista Community TV. We would love for you to connect with us there. We'll be able to share things with you. Personally, when I feel anxious, I like to travel. That, that's my getaway. I like to travel. I want to go see something that's bigger than me um, and bigger than my problems. I, I, I want to check out of media. I want to check out of my phone. I want to check out. And um, in order to do that, I also need to make sure that my car is safe. Because the last thing that I want to do when I am checking out and my cell phone's not working over in Jasper, Arkansas, or somewhere on the Buffalo River, is to have a breakdown that I could have avoided. So my guest today is Neil Crozier, my fantastic husband. I'm so excited to have him here. Uh, and I wanted to bring him on to talk about what he does to look at my car before I go on a road trip. So Neil, welcome to the, to the Bella Vista and Beyond. We're glad that you're here. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about who you are and um, what it is you do when you look at my car before I go on a road trip to make sure that me and the kids are safe. Hi, thank you. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. And I'd love to help people because I want people's cars nice and safe on the road. Um, well, what we do with your car, well, with any car that we come in, uh, we'll always do an inspection. So it doesn't matter um, what service we do on the vehicle, whether it's an oil change, a tire rotation, or just even fitting an air filter. But uh, we'll always inspect everything on the vehicle. So we're going to check all of your levels. We're actually going to check your tires, your brakes, your suspension. We lift the vehicle up in the air so we can check everything underneath. Those things that you can't walk around a car and check, we're actually checking so we can give you a full report on your car and you know what's going on. So if there's a little bit of maintenance that needs to be done before you go on that road trip, you know you're going to be safe to go. Or if your brakes are about to wear out on that trip, you know that you can get it taken care of and take that road trip safely. That's fantastic. Tell me a little bit about your experience or education when it comes to automotive. Um, I've been a mechanic for just over 30 years now, um, probably starting to show my age, um, <laughs> but uh, I started in Wolverhampton in England, uh, I did a, a two-year study at college, which is like a, a technical school that you'd call it here, um, and then I had a, an internship in a very high prestigious shop when I first started as a mechanic. Over the years I've worked in um, several different dealers, and then I came to America and almost started again. <laughs> Right. That was probably a, a little bit different for you, trying to learn, was the technology different or was the terminology different? or Technology was about the same, but terminology was definitely a whole lot different, especially when I'm asking for a, a, track, a track rod end from England's terminology of a tie rod end and other things as we go into the vehicle. There's a lot of differences there, especially when you go to the parts store trying to ask for something they can't find. Right, right. I totally understand that. Um, I can tell you, when I graduated from, from high school and I went into college, I thought car maintenance was, I have to keep gas in my car, I have to pay my insurance, and I need to change the oil sometimes, whenever that may be. Um, and I have done pretty well over the years with those things, although I know your friends on Facebook make fun of me often because he posts about the fact that I never have gas in my car. But, <laughs> but tell me a little bit more about what needs to be done on car maintenance to keep them safe on the road. So obviously, yes, keeping gas in the car is one thing. Um, but with vehicles today, the biggest thing that you want to do is preventative maintenance. Change your oils, check your tires, obviously, keep your air filter and cabin air filters clean because one, it will help you breathe easier and the car breathe easier as well. Um, staying on top of preventative maintenance can actually keep you driving on the road a whole lot longer. As with, if you bring a car in and it hasn't been maintained uh, very well and you're about to go on this road trip, there is a good potential you might not make it without a stop or two 
to your final destination. Um, things that we like people to understand as well, that even though oil changes are very regular at three and 5,000 miles ourselves, newer cars are coming out and saying you can have oil changes 7,500 7, miles up to 15,000 miles. But a fun fact that a lot of people don't realize is that cars actually don't always leak oil. Sometimes they use oil. And by dealer manufacturer uh, uh, specifics, they also say that engines can use up to a quarter of oil every thousand miles. So one of the biggest facts I like people to do is keep checking that oil because your car could be using it even though it's not leaking it and you may run out of oil before it's time for an oil change. So mm -hmm. it's a fun fact I like people to know. Yeah, absolutely. I've heard about that. There are some Audis that they say two quarts of oil is, is common in 1,000, 1,500 miles. I found that amazing, but I don't have to get the oil change for 7,500 miles, and there's only five or six quarts in there. I'm going to run out of oil before my next oil change. How often should we be checking our own oil in between visits to you? Realistically, I like people to check their oil every couple of weeks, um, especially before you go out on a little road trip. Um, you know, most people fill up the gas once, maybe twice a week, um, but I would say have a look at those tires, just check your oil level and anything else, just bring it to the shop because we're happy to check everything for you. Fantastic. I know that a lot of our viewers are um, in a category that's considered high risk for COVID and that can make them less than comfortable about going out for maintenance on their vehicles. They need to get it taken care of, but at the same time, they're high risk and, and going out and sitting in a lobby uh, may not necessarily be their cup of tea. What has your industry done that might help with that type of client? Um, with us ourselves, we've done several different things. Um, one of the things that we do, we'll actually work with the customer so they can leave their keys in a safe place and we'll actually go to the customer's car, pick it up, we'll pre-sanitize the car so we can bring it in safely and make sure the customer's feeling safe as they see their car leave take care of any work that they need, whether it's an oil change, major repair, and then bring it back to them, re-sanitize the car, put the keys in a safe place, and then we'll talk to them by phone, um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page of what work they require, what was required, and mm -hmm. everybody is happy. And then that way, the customer be, can be completely contactless. And we're also doing things with um, after hours, pick up and drop off, so the customer can drop their car off if they're not, sorry, if they don't want people to drive their car anywhere, mm -hmm. that is not a problem too. We've got the uh, key drop and an after hours pickup. And again, we'll do anything that we can where we want to make the customer feel as comfortable as possible and knowing that they don't want to mix or can't be with six pe within six people or six feet of people, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. or they are high risk and they're not leaving the houses. Mm -hmm. No matter what they want, we're actually there to help and we'll work with any customer in any way. Fantastic. I did see your after hours pickup box and it's, it's like a lock box. You don't leave your keys like in the glove box or on the visor in the gas cab. No, that's correct. We'll actually leave them locked up. So we give you a specific combination. So you know that code to get into that box and get your keys and nobody else can actually access them at all. Very good. Very good. And I was on your Facebook page and I saw something about loaner cars. Tell me about that. Yes, we've been doing loaner cars for a while and this year we decided to expand our loaner fleet and we've just bought three new Hondas. So when you're bringing your vehicle in for some maintenance or a major repair, sometimes you've only got that one vehicle. And we know how inconvenient it can be when you haven't got your vehicle because basically we drive everywhere. Mm -hmm. So what we did just to keep people out on the road, as soon as they're coming in, we'll get them in a loaner car so they can carry on with their day with whatever it is that they need to do while we take care of their little baby and get it back on the road so that they can get it back without any inconvenience to the customer. Fantastic. And are you sanitizing those between users? Yes, we are. Every time the car comes back in, it's cleaned, it's sanitized, it's nice and fresh, almost like a new car ready to go out again. Fantastic. And I noticed you brought a machine today. Tell me a little bit about what this is. Yes, this is um, an Ozo machine. And because you can't clean every part of your vehicle um, with the COVID and everything else that's going around, we've decided to start the ozone treatment. And what this does, it's like a disinfectant that will go through the whole car and it will wipe all the surfaces clean with the chemical reactions that it does inside creating ozone. It is something that will actually clean areas within the car. It runs inside your air vents, underneath the seats, into your um, headliners. So for instance, a great way to describe it is if there was a smoker in the car and there was an odor smell in there, 
this will actually clean the smell out. Sometimes, depending on how bad the smell is, it may take one or two treatments. But for a san san sanitary clean, it will actually take one clean and it's like wiping a counter with a disinfectant cloth to make the whole car as clean and as sanitized as possible inside. So does it get the inside of the car wet? No, it doesn't get it wet at all. It's actually all done from air molecules. This has a little clever little trick inside it, which is very detailed, unfortunately. I couldn't get into all of that. But it actually pulls the air in, creates ozone, and the ozone is like a disinfectant as it works and runs within the vehicle. Okay. We'll actually have your car running in part of the process so the air gets into all of the air ducts and into every crevice of the car inside of it to clean it and disinfect it. That's amazing. So I see you're pretty passionate about safety. Tell me, um, tell me more about that. Well, one of the things is um, in England, we have some very stiff um, tests. They call it a Ministry of Transportation test, where we inspect the cars from start to finish. And we always like to make sure that the cars are safe on the road. Now, we can't physically condemn your car, but I would like you to know about your car. So if there's a problem on there, whether it be your brakes, a ball joint, some, something leaking, we want you to know about it so we can get you the best um, repair for your vehicle to keep you on the road nice and safe. Awesome. Well, I am so glad that you came today. Thank you for sharing with all, our, all of our viewers um, who you are, what you do. Uh, I didn't even say what company you're with, um, but we'll go ahead and we'll flash on the screen your website, uh, which I believe is... Our website is NWA Car Clinic. Perfect. NWACarClinic.com. Um, his phone number, and if you if they need to reach you, what's the best way to reach out to your company? Um, we've got several ways. You can call us on 479-756-8886, and that's our office number. You can reach us through Facebook Messenger um, or our website at nwacarclinic.com or our um, Facebook page at carclinic.com. Perfect. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We hope you, hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next month. Remember, you can see this program on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at various times. You may also see this program on YouTube.com by going to Bellavista TV. been a presentation of Bella Vista Community Television. Thank you for joining us.